begin our mini unit here on the popular chronics. And you might be thinking, I've never heard of this before, never seen this before. Well, you hopefully have seen the word cone, and that will come in handy as we talk about conics. Now, to begin, I want you to investigate. Just look at this right triangle with my partner you see. Legs A and B. Now, we can actually generate a three-dimensional solid called a cone, yes, by rotating the triangle about its leg B. So think of this as a 2D shape. And then as we rotate it around, we create this 3D solid, 2D shape, 3D solid, okay? Now, the leg C is often called the hypotenuse, yes, but of the 3D shape, it's really called the generator. So it actually generates the cone. And then the line L, which is down the middle, is like the axis of symmetry. It's the line that cuts it in half, equal halves. And the point A at the top, yes, you can call it the tip, or in this case, the vertex of the cone. Mm -hmm. Now, if we place together, though, the vertices of the two cones such that they share the same axis of symmetry, then we have what is often called a double napped cone. Okay, so two cones kind of put together, like that, like the hourglass, or the, it's not the hourglass, that uh, timer thing that people sometimes use with sand inside. I'd like you to quickly label the diagram here for me, please. Where is the vertex? Boom, right there, yep. Where is the axis of symmetry? You got it. Axis of symmetry. And last but not least, the generator. Yeah, it's one of these sides here, the generator, right? Good. Okay. Now, as we move to the next page, the idea then is conics. Yes, that word in the title, conics are really shapes that are created from making a plane that intersects these cones, or the double nap cone. Four different shapes can be created, depending upon the angle at which the plane intersects the cone. So if you look at the one on the left, notice that the plane is, what, parallel to the cone? So, oops, whoa, strange. Plane is parallel to base of the cone. What do you think that shape would be then? Yeah, that is a, oops, not a cone, but a circle. What happens if I actually slant it a little bit? So now it's, the plane is, I'll say, inclined, okay, towards the base of the cone. In this case, you don't get a circle, you get some sort of weird stretch circle. I'll call it an ellipse. Now the third one might be something that you're familiar with from Math 11. What's this shape that looks like a U? You guessed it, a parabola. In this case, the plane is cut parallel. Not to the base this time though to the generator. All right, once again, this slanted side here, the generator. And finally, if we were to cut it look like this, the last one on the right-hand side, we actually have something called a hyperbola. And that's when the plane is parallel to the axis of symmetry and it also has to intersect S E C T can't spell intersect intersect both codes all right so that's how we get these four different conic shapes, and that's what we're going to be studying in this mini unit here. 
Um, you might have done Unit 4 already in pre-calculus, or you might not, depending on how your teacher um, reorders the curriculum. But if you have done it, and I hope you have, you should actually remember the equation of a circle. Don't know if you recall that, but if you had a circle, you might have done this in pre-calc 11 now, thinking about this. X comma Y as a point. Remember doing this with a triangle. Hopefully you remember this is just Pythagoras, so x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And then remember shifting things left and right, up and down. If you did that, then hopefully you recognize that you are going to shift it to the left or right, each units, and then you get that. Okay, so once I move the center and the radius equation one in blue, this is actually something we call standard form. So uh, you might have remember doing different forms for different equations. Yes, it's the same thing here. This is called standard form. Um, there's also another one called general form where they don't actually have the brackets and you move everything to one side, similar to what we did like with the parabola in grade 11. Uh, we'll talk about that in a moment, but right now, in example number one, let's just focus on seeing if you can actually write the equation in the circle with the given center and the specific radius. So, if I move the center from the origin to negative 2 that's to 8, that means I went 2 to the left, and I went 8 up, and so, whoa, so what you should see here is then x plus 2, and then y minus 8, and then of course that equals to r squared, so that's just 5 squared. Done. I shouldn't say write it in both standard form, just write it in standard form. Okay? And then some people would prefer if you just maybe square out the 5. Doesn't matter to me, but here you go. Alright, let's do example number 2. Here, I'm going to ask you to find the equation of the circle, given a center, but this time it passes through a point. So yes, if you think about that center, we can go x minus 4 again, and then y plus 1, because you're going 1 down this time. This time we don't actually have r, but we do have a point, and because it's a point on the circle, that is an x and y coordinate. So we can actually plug in the point 3 comma 7 and now solve for r. Let's do it. 3 minus 4 all squared. 7 plus 1 all squared equals to r squared. Negative 1 squared. 8 squared equals r squared. That's 1 plus 64. Nice, that's 65. That's r squared. Now, I could take the square root and say r is root 65, but look, in the end I'm going to have to square it anyway, so you like doing those steps, go right ahead, but I'm thinking, hey, I already know what r squared is, I'm just going to replace r squared with the 65. And we're done. Cool. Oh, what's this extension? Hey, expand to remove the brackets in above standard form equation. Okay, so if we remove the brackets, that means I have to square out the x minus 4. So I'm really just doing this, x minus 4 times x minus 4. Um, I kind of like writing it like this because I know students sometimes are tempted when they square it just to square the x term and the 4 term and you get like x squared minus 16. No, don't do that. But every time I write like this, people seem to remember, oh yeah, I need to expand, foil, distribute, whatever you want to call it. So I'm just going to do that right now. And I don't think you need to do it all the time, but, you know, doing it once or twice to help review is always a good thing. Doing math right is always a good thing. Hey, 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 so I've removed the brackets. Now, if I actually remove the brackets and actually move all the terms to one side and simplify, then I actually have what we call that general form. So x squared minus 8x plus y squared plus 2y, and then now 16 plus 1 is 17, 17 minus 65, I think that's negative 48. And now if that equals to 0, lo and behold, this is the general form. 
So these two are equivalent, right? They are the same, they just look a little bit different. Okay? General form. So the idea, once again, in general form is you've got a x squared term, you've got a y squared term, you've got an x term, a y term, and a constant term. Okay? And we have to make sure, of course, that a does not equal to 0. Because if it does, then that means these two terms are gone, and we're left with just a linear term. We're back to grade 10 math. Let's not go back there. Grade 10 was a tough year, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, number three. This time I gave you the equation in general form, but I want you to um, find its center and radius. And it's not really apparent if we look at the general form. So I guess what we need to do is find a way to change it back to the standard form and then from there we should be able to identify the center and the radius. How do we do that? Well think back to pre-calc 11 when you talked about the parabola. We did the same thing going from general form to that standard form. Remember what I'm talking about? Of course you don't but I will just review with you anyways. Remember, this is general form. And then this was ooh, vertex form or standard form. And how do we go from general to vertex? It's the same way here, completing the square. Oh, bad memories. I know, they're coming back. Um, to complete the square, I'm going to ask us to put all the x terms together, put all the y terms together, and then also move the constant to the other side. Okay? Now, y squared is already a square, so hey, we're good. We don't do anything about that. But this x squared plus 8, hmm, that's something weird. We need to... Do you remember what we needed to do again? Now, if you didn't, this is where if you had a teacher that did algebra tiles, bless that teacher... I think that would have given you a good visual representation of what you're supposed to do here. And if you didn't, I'm going to show you now anyways. Ha ha ha. So here's our x squared term. There's one of them. And then we have eight x's. And remember those algebra tiles with these rods, right? Eight of them. Now how do I distribute eight of them so that this continues to be a square? Well, if I put one on the right, I have to put one on the bottom. If I put two on the right, it's two on the bottom. If I put three on the right, it's three on the bottom. That's six already. I need eight, so there's one more rod here, and then one more here. Now, the idea is, I want this to be a square. So, what are we missing here? You guessed it. Well, maybe you didn't guess it. You understood it, because you saw the visual now. What am I missing? 16 little cubes and those little cubes all represent the number one so really what you're missing here is a plus 16 and if you can do that then of course you can factor this and that becomes a perfect square in this case just x plus 4 all squared do you see this x plus 4 1 2 3 4 right that's the length and then look x plus 1 2 3 4 that's the width Okay. Uh, for those of you who remember the algorithm, it's just taking half of the middle term, so half of the coefficient of the linear term. And then you have to square it. I hope the diagram shows you why we have to do half, right? Look, I took the eight rods and I split it in half, right? Here's four, here's four. Okay, but don't forget, if I add 16 to one side, you just can't do it like that. It does, that changes the actual equation. So if I want to balance out this equation, I better do the same thing to the other side. And now I can continue on because, like I said earlier, that factors into x squared, or sorry, x plus 4 all squared. We continue to have a y squared here. And then 65 plus 16, that's just 81. And now we have the standard form. I can now pick off the center. It looks like it's been shifted four to the left. And then the radius is, don't say 81, it's the square root of 81 or nine. Okay, I hope this was a good review for you because I'm gonna make you do part B yourself. All right, see if you can try that yourself.
once again, I'm going to help you out first of all, though. Group all the x terms together. Group all the y terms together. Move the constant to the other side. All right, enjoy. By the way, this one, might, the, the y might be a little bit easier. I'm going to say to you for the x, you're going to encounter decimals. All right, your turn. Were you really waiting for me to do this? I said your turn. The Y is the easier one. Half of two is one, one squared. Mm, half of one, that's a half. Half squared is a quarter. Did you put down a quarter? Did you also write down a quarter on the other side? And did you factor this to become x minus a half all squared? 14.75 plus a quarter is 15 plus 1 is 16. How lovely. Beautiful, nice numbers. Center once again then. Moved half to the right. One down. Radius once again. Not 16, but root 16. There's 4. Good. Good, 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 good. All right, one last example for today. Oh, no numbers. Oh, you're so scared now. Don't be. M and N are just some positive integers. So they're just some numbers. They just represent numbers. That's all it is. How would I go ahead and find the radius of this circle then? The radius is always the number on the right hand side. You can say, hey, it's zero, isn't it? Think about what you just said. A circle with radius zero. That's nothing. That's like a dot. That's not even a dot. It's not even a speck. So maybe we need to actually move things to the right hand side. So I'm looking at mx squared. That's an x squared term. We're going to keep that on the left side. My squared, that's a y squared term. Let's keep that on the left side but that negative n i think we should move it to the right hand side and if you think the radius is just root n well be careful because if you look at the previous examples i said it's x squared plus y squared not mx squared plus my squared right remember this there's no m in front so guess what we need to get rid of that m and it just so happens that m is in both of those terms so we can kindly factor it out and then once again to move it to the other side, we now need to divide. This is just algebra. And then now you're thinking, I'm done. Well, almost. Remember, here's my x squared plus y squared, but this represents not r, but r squared. So therefore, r would just be the square root of n over m. And we're okay because note both m and n are positive integers. That's it for today. Come back to the next lesson. We're going to be talking about ellipses.